how I put it, the Kanye controversy. Yeah. Please. All that bullshit. <laughs> now, don't tell us anything you don't want to, even though we'd love to I, hear I, it. But yeah, spill like, I just did a, uh, spill I did a podcast before this, and like the dude asked me about this, and I was just like, nah, I don't want to talk about this shit no more. But it's like, I kind of want to bring it back. No problem. Oh, you heard it here first. <laughs> this hey, is, this is the TV. first time. This is a TVSG exclusive. Um, exclusive. Wow, I'm drawing blank. Uh, I don't know. You're too excited. Oh, You're too excited that, off these exclusives. Is, this, is that what we're doing now? <laughs> nah. <laughs> the, you yes, shooting but blanks? nah. <laughs> Are you okay, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it's the MK Ultra. Right, so, <laughs> I'll say like 2011, um, me and Personal, Sydney Theory, he used to go mm-hmm. by Personal. We were living at my mom's crib. And we were just like, you know, being creative, working on shit, but like not really doing much, but we were just trying and shit. But I remember this is when I just started like smoking weed and shit. And <laughs> shout out the weed. My mom already <laughs> hated this nigga. So but he wasn't even smoking. Like he was telling me I was smoking too much. And I was smoking like a bowl, like a pinch in a bowl. Like he was calling me a fiend for that. Was, <laughs> I could smoke a dub throughout a whole week. And it'll be like, damn. One day we went, we went to go eat some McDonald's or some shit, and my mom blowing up my phone. I'm like, oh shit, she probably found weed in my room. I answered, I answered the call, and she was like, fucking cursing me out, like, get your ass back here, da da da. What the fuck is this, da da da. So I'm like, yo, let me just chill, eat my food, (laughs) enjoy this last moment of life. (laughs) And we pull up, she's like spazzing on them, spazzing on us. And she's like thinking it's him that's like dragging me into this world of drugs. And <laughs> little does she know he's like ridiculing me for smoking weed. <laughs> oh wow! So she like tried to break his keyboard. And she was like, she's kicking him out. She's yeah. kicking me out. Blah blah blah. And my older brother was living in New York at the time, and he was he had like kidney failure. He was living with HIV. He was living with AIDS, and he was living by himself in Queens. So my mom kicked me out. I'm like, yo, fuck it, bro. Like. We were always, like, you know, trying to get to the next level and shit. Mm-hmm. So it just felt like, you know, maybe there's an opportunity to just, you know, make a leap. So I ended up moving to New York before that. I spent a month with my homie uh, Lino at the bodega. And that's where the wild kind of started formulating. Like, he made the first song. Actually, he made it at my mom's crib, but he f- showed it to me at the bodega. And oh, then, okay. you know, we went to New York, dead of winter. So it was, like, oh, the worst time damn. to go. What so f- all that energy... It was just, like, fucked up shit. And he was, like, you know, going through it, too, with his girl. She was still in Miami. And, she, you know, he was going through his drama. And then he ended up, you know, leaving. So it was just me and my brother. So I'm, like, you know, just dealing with my brother in bad health and seeing all types of wild shit. And then I ended up doing acid on um, on New Year's. And that was, like, a crazy-ass trip. It was, like, a double tab or some shit. That shit had me gone. Like, that was my third time tripping, but... The first two times I didn't really experience anything, but that time I was like out of there. So that probably was like <laughs> the the catalyst for like as far as the aesthetic of that project. Uh, a lot of that was experienced during that. I, trip. I, I, thinking back on it, I could see it now. Yeah. <laughs> so I just remember like trying to go outside, like trying to go. I remember like it was New Year's, we partied and shit, and then I woke up like I didn't have no change of clothes. So I'm like on acid. Stank from the night before, so now I'm starting to get self conscious, tripping out on acid. Oh. I'm like, yo, I need to go home and take a shower. And then my brother's like, yo, he's mad because I'm tripping by myself. He wanted a trip too. Oh. But I'm like, yo, I don't want to trip with you because it's like gonna be an emotional trip. Because then, like, I don't want to think about all that shit. So I'm like, now yeah. it's already like wow. he already took me down, like because yeah. we were talking on the phone. So I'm like trying to get home, and then I'm like feeling all the pain of New York City like crashing down me. Like it was thunder and lightning. I could hear everybody crying. I hear ambulances and shit. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, I wanted to jump in front of a train. I remember I was in the subway. Like, I'm sitting on a train. This lady was sitting next to me eating chicken. (laughs) It felt like she was inside my ear just like chewing chicken. (laughs) It was a black lady. Wow. It was a black lady. It was this black lady, old lady like with a mink and like pearls on and she just looked like the devil to me. I was like, yo, what the fuck? Oh, I was mink? Like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, we go, we going to Jamaica, Queens and you got this shit on. You like, you're supposed to be in fucking Manhattan or some shit. Like, <laughs> it was just weird. Like, damn. I ended up getting home and like, yeah, it was just like, my mind was blown. But anyways, that sounds fast cool. forward a couple of days after that, actually prior to that, I remember Kanye was going off on Twitter 
like about Donda and shit. That's when he first was gonna start Donda. And he put out an email, he was like, yo, email me. If you wanna be a part of Donda, we looking for designers, this and that and the third. So I'm crunk like, yo, I'm gonna join Donda. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as I sent an email, it was like, that shit was rejected. There was, you know, <laughs> motherfuckers already filled that shit up. He put another one, same shit. So I was like, oh, whatever. And then I remember randomly like guessing like what his email could be. And then I got a rejection back. And you know, when you send an email to, uh, you know, to an address that isn't registered, it uh-huh. sends you that shit and it's like all this code. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I got that. But Sutton told me like, yo, read through the code. I don't know why Sutton just told me to do that. So okay. I'm like, let me look through this. So I don't know why I did that. But anyways, it's like I manifested it. So I scrolled down <laughs> through it and in the in the middle of it, it was a subject line and it said, it said R-E, it said I-T to Kanye or some shit like that. Like it was a subject line. Uh-huh. No, it was a subject line that said, hey, it's Kanye. And then in there, I could see his email address in that. Wow. And I was like, Wow. Wow. Like, what the hacking fuck? is supposed to be hard. <laughs> right? I'm like, this is like, but this God again doing some weird shit to me. Like, wow. yeah, here me give you a little, little booster pack. Right that there. nigga was like, but here's what's, <laughs> so, here's what's crazy. Willy Wonka ass nigga, man. <laughs> that explains why his password is five zeros. He just guessed his email. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the whole thing about his cousin stealing his laptop. Yeah. Very believable. Right? <laughs> very believable. It was like, <laughs> it was like password. It's uh, probably okay. very easy to steal. For real. So very I took, easy? I took, <laughs> to steal? I took that email and then I sent him an email. I sent him personal music mm-hmm. and I was like, yo, tweet this. Because he was tweeting mad random shit. He was talking about Donda. He was just going on a rant. Like, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> so he never tweeted his music or anything, but whatever, like, the email went through. So I just forgot about that shit. Then I ended up doing... I ended up doing the acid and shit. Then after that trip, it was like a couple of days after that, I got a response. Dum, dum, dum. From <laughs> Che Pope, who's the executive producer, or he was the president before Push T was the president. Now, he was the executive producer of Jesus. He's like a big part of good music. He's uh-huh. like a big part of the music industry, period. But he emailed me and he was like, <clears throat> You got any more week to listen to? So I'm like, Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dot com. Sorry putting your email out there, Trey. Y'all, y'all mm. gonna have to mute that. Part. <laughs> we're, we're gonna edit this. <laughs> but That's yeah, so cool. <laughs> he responded. He was like, Yeah. So I called a person like, yo, these motherfuckers from good music just replied, like, send me a demo of your album. And he'd been working on Sydney Theory since oh eight and that that's Bro, it feel like eighty eight. Yeah. <laughs> that nigga was supposed to release that shit like eight times, yeah, but it's been good, like, you can't years. rush perfection. You know what? I just had a moment. I met personal years ago. But then I met him at City and Theory like three months ago. <laughs> and I was know, like, nigga, I met you before. You I'm going to give you some instances of how small the world is. One, you know he used to date personal. Wow. Yeah. And two, remember that picture from Rock the Bells? Yes. Oh, you can black out that name too. <laughs> you just giving out. There's a, the tea, boy. There's a picture personal took with a girl. <laughs> And guess who was standing up in the background? You? This Us? nigga. Oh. <laughs> That's Wasn't crazy. I, with, I was with Cruz. Yeah, yeah. I, I was with him. We were, you oh, were yeah, with I didn't Cruz. know you yet. No, you didn't know me yet, because this was 07. I think I you knew Cruz, though. No, 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 no. I met him in 08. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. yeah but that was 08, like, Rock the Bells. I met him after. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. But, but sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Continue. My bad. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm like, yo, fucking Kanye people is emailing me like they want to hear your shit. Amazing. Send me that shit. And this nigga like takes the whole day. <laughs> I'm like, bruh. He probably cried. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga has no concept of time. As no. you can see by yeah. him working on his album for 10 years. So anyways, <laughs> he finally sends me the demo like at yeah. midnight. So then I sent them some corny ass email like, yeah, smoke some shit and listen to this. Da, da, da. <laughs> and then, you know, they didn't really say anything. So I'm like, whatever. They probably didn't fuck with it. So, but I would keep in contact with him, with Che, because at that point, Kanye didn't, never sent me an email. So, I remember telling my brother, like, yo, these motherfuckers from Good Music responded to me, da, da, da. He's like, yo, watch out for Kanye, bro. He's like, that nigga gonna steal that shit. He told me this shit. Oh. <laughs> Sidebar, Kanye's been accused of stealing a style for every single album, and you can name it. But and it'll make some feasible sense, but I'll tell you yeah. after. <laughs> so, yeah, my brother, my brother forewarned me of this, too. 
So, but my ego was like, yo, that would still be raw because then it'll be like Kanye stole from me. <laughs> so it's like this is the whole movie foreshadowing itself. So, yeah, already. <laughs> so then I remember, you know, shit started getting kind of crazy in New York. My brother was like about to get evicted, and like, I was just stressed. Like I ran out of money that I went up there with, and then you know, shit was getting rough. And then my boy, my boy Reese, who manages Stephen A. Clark and Denzel. Mm-hmm. Stephen A. Clark. He was like... Shut up. He became my manager at that point, and he found me a way out of, getting out of New York City for doing some shit with Rico Love and Jim Johnson. Mm-hmm. So I ended up coming down, you know, filming some shit in the studio with them. I was, you know, living good. Not living good. It's not like I was balling or some shit, but I was just yeah, happy to be out of cold-ass New York. Yeah. <laughs> I was in Miami. It was colorful and shit. Like, mm-hmm. I needed that Cole. back. So I was like, I would talk to my brother, but it was just stressful, like, you know... I went to New York to help him, like, but mm. it felt like I wasn't prepared to do it. Like, I couldn't, it, I couldn't pursue what I was trying to do, and help him too. It was just like too much. Like, got you. But around April, I started like working on like art pieces. The wild, like I remember, I woke up one day and I made the um, elephant in front of the project building. That was yeah. such a. That was dope. Yeah, I've showed that. To, I've showed people like couple pieces of your like just a few pictures and it'd be like what's yo like they literally point at my screen like what's that yeah <laughs> that's dope and I, and I bought the book the booklet you have for the while yeah. yeah it's just dope Thank I'm gonna get some of that shit tatted <laughs> that, that'd be hard as fuck I yeah it you. would but yeah so I, I started making that shit like around April and then like every day I was just inspired like I would, like I remember I made the 365 and then I went on a, like a long ass hiatus yeah so that was like my first